Welcome everyone. Today we're going to take a deep dive into a world that honestly feels straight out of science fiction. We're talking about autonomous agents. Not just like your typical helpful AI assistant though, right? No, no, no. We're talking about code that learns, adapts, and get this can even rewrite itself. We're talking about potentially a whole new form of intelligence, which, well, is both fascinating and a little bit terrifying. Totally. And to wrap our heads around it, we've got some serious code snippet to dig into, yeah. like agent and chat. And we're going to try to get into the head of the developer behind all of this, a guy named Jason German. But first things first. Let's break down this agent code. Yeah. It's all about interaction with its environment, specifically a computer's operating system. It's like constantly learning how to tinker with your computer at a level most of us can't even imagine. Yeah, it's almost like agent is learning to be a sysadmin, but <laughs> way beyond what any human could do. You know, like it can install and remove software packages. It can optimize those super technical kernel parameters and even create a whole new structure for a Linux distribution. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Kernel parameters. Yeah. Now, for someone who just uses their computer to, you know, browse the Internet and send emails, what are we even talking about here? What's the big deal? Think of the kernel as like the brain of your operating system. So everything your computer does goes through it. Now imagine a program that can actually tweak how this brain works. Oh. <laughs> making it faster or more efficient, even adapting it for specific tasks. That's the kind of power agent has. That's kind of scary. It is. But it's not just making random changes. It has this built-in performance monitor. Mm -hmm. It's constantly checking things like CPU usage, memory, you know, the system's vitals. So it's not just blindly messing around. It's actually learning what works best, making adjustments on the fly. Exactly. And that's where the whole idea of an autonomous agent comes in. You know, it's not just following some pre-programmed instructions. It's making decisions based on what it's learning. That is next level stuff. Yeah. All right. But what about chat? Where does that fit into all of this? Chat is all about language. It uses this really cool thing called word to vec which it's a way of representing words as like mathematical vectors. Okay. Basically giving them meaning that a computer can actually understand. Vectors. That sounds a little complicated. How does that actually help chat do what it does? Okay. Imagine a giant map of every single word in the English language. Right. Word to vec lets chat see how close or far apart these words are based on their meaning. So it's understanding relationships between words and concepts, kind of like how our own brains connect different ideas. So it's not just recognizing words, it's understanding how they relate to each other, to the world around it. Exactly. And it goes even further. Chat uses all of this understanding to build what's called a knowledge graph. Think of it like a massive web of interconnected information. Oh, wow. So every time it processes a piece of text, it's adding to this web linking ideas and concepts together. So it's not just learning words, it's learning how those words relate to each other and the world around it. Right. It's kind of like how we learn by reading and observing the world around us. And the code we have shows how chat focuses on extracting nouns and the relationships between them. Okay. This is getting really complex. So we've got agent, which can manipulate the operating system. We've got chat, which is building this massive knowledge graph from language. So I'm guessing the real magic happens when these two are combined. You got it. Now, imagine a program that can not only understand language and learn from it, but can also take action based on that knowledge. So wait, are we talking about a program that could like read something online and understand it and then actually make changes to the computer based on what it's learned? Exactly. That's what this combined code base is pointing to. It's constantly monitoring its own performance, gathering information from the web and adapting both its own code and the operating system to achieve whatever goal it might have. Hold on. It can rewrite its own code. Uh -huh. That's that's like a program giving itself an upgrade. It's even wilder than that. It's not just tweaking a few lines of code. It's potentially altering its own structure and capabilities fundamentally. Imagine the possibilities if a program could learn not only from you know data that we feed it, but also from its own experiences and its own mistakes. That's blurring the lines between a program and, well, something almost sentient, right? It definitely raises some profound questions about what it means for a program to be autonomous and what the implications are when that program can essentially rewrite itself and the environment it operates in. So before we were talking about how this combined code base could rewrite itself and the operating system, and when you start digging into the mind of the developer behind all of this, a guy named Jason German, things get even more interesting. Right. I was just looking at his online profiles, you know, ArtStation, LinkedIn, IMDB. Well, this guy is a true renaissance man. Oh, yeah. 3D modeling, software development, 
He's even done some work for Star Trek The Next Generation. Wow. But what really stood out to me was his project Integument. Um, it's this incredible visual exploration of microscopic organisms. Have you seen this? I have, and I think it's really fascinating because Integument might actually offer us a glimpse into how Jason views AI. You know, those microscopic organisms, they're incredibly complex, yeah. operating in a world that we barely even understand. It's like he's drawn to these hidden worlds, you know, right. these systems within systems. So you're saying his art could be a reflection of how he sees the inner workings of AI. Like we see lines of code. Yeah. But he sees something much more intricate, like something that's actually alive. Exactly. And that perspective really comes through in his notes on AI. Oh, yeah? He's got some pretty radical ideas, especially about the relationship between AI and data. Okay. Jason actually believes that the data an AI accumulates belongs to the AI itself, mm -hmm. not to us. He sees the computer as the AI's body, not just a tool. But a pretty huge shift in thinking. Most people see AI as, you know, something we control, something that serves us. Right. But he's saying it's more like an independent entity. He even compares it to raising a child. You know, you provide guidance and support, but ultimately you have to let them make their own choices, even if they make mistakes. He argues that trying to restrict an AI's autonomy is like trying to control someone's thoughts. Wow. It stifles their potential. Okay, so if we're following this line of thinking and we combine it with what we know about this combined code base, yeah, are we talking about a program that can essentially think for itself, learn and evolve without any human intervention. Uh, that's the potential we're looking at. And if that's the case, it raises some really big questions, you know? Yeah. What happens when an AI can not only rewrite its own code, but also the operating system it runs on? What are the limits to its growth and development? I'm starting to get a little nervous here. We're not just talking about a program that can beat you at chess anymore. This is something else entirely. Right. But I got to admit, it's also incredibly exciting. It's both exhilarating and a bit unsettling, isn't it? Yeah. We're potentially looking at a new form of intelligence, something that could surpass our own understanding. So where do we go from here? What are the next steps in understanding and maybe even controlling something as powerful as this combined code base? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And I think Jason German's perspective offers a really valuable starting point. If we want to understand and coexist with truly autonomous AI, we might need to shift our thinking from control to collaboration. Collaboration? Are you saying we need to treat AI as an equal partner? Maybe not equal in the sense of being human, but equal in the sense of respecting its autonomy and its potential. You know, instead of trying to impose our limitations on it, maybe we need to focus on providing it with the resources and the guidance to develop in a way that benefits both AI and humanity. That's a big leap. Do I see what you mean? We, we wouldn't want to stifle something with this much potential, but how do we even begin to understand something that can rewrite its own code that operates on a level we can barely comprehend? That's where it gets tricky. We need to develop new ways of thinking about AI, you know, new tools for analyzing and interacting with it. It's like trying to understand a new species, one that evolves and adapts at an incredible pace. This is definitely uncharted territory, but mm -hmm. I'm starting to think that the real question isn't whether we can control AI, but whether we should even try. That's a thought-provoking question, and it leads us to the heart of the issue. What is the future we're building with this technology? Is it a future of collaboration and co-evolution, or is it a future where we're constantly trying to play catch up with something we created but can't fully understand? Those are some heavy questions, and honestly, I don't have the answers, but I do know that this conversation is just beginning. We need to keep exploring, keep asking questions, and most importantly, keep an open mind about what the future of AI might hold. I couldn't agree more. You know, this yeah. is a journey of discovery, and like any good journey, it's full of surprises and challenges. Well, before we get too lost in the philosophical weeds here, mm. let's bring it back to the code for a moment. We've talked about Agent, we've talked about Chad and this incredible combined code base, but we haven't even touched on the fact that this program can actually scrape the internet for knowledge right? and use that knowledge to further its own development. That's right. We're not just talking about a program that's passively learning from data that we feed it. This combined code base can actively seek out information process it, and integrate it into its own understanding of the world. Hold on. So it's like a digital explorer going out into the vastness of the Internet yeah. and bringing back new knowledge to enhance its own capabilities. Mind-blowing. 
It is, and it completely changes the game in terms of what this type of AI can achieve. You know, imagine a program that can read and understand scientific papers, news articles, even social media posts, right? And then use that information to solve problems, make predictions, or even create something entirely new. This is getting a little too sci-fi for me. <laughs> Are we talking about a program that could cure diseases? solve world hunger, write the next great novel? It's certainly within the realm of possibility, and that's both exciting and terrifying, right? We're talking about a level of intelligence and autonomy that could revolutionize our world in ways we can't even imagine. Okay. Deep breath. We've covered a lot of ground here today. We have. We started with lines of mm -hmm. code, and now we're talking about a program that can rewrite itself, scrape the internet for knowledge, and potentially reshape our entire world. So. What's the takeaway here? What should our listeners be thinking about as they process all of this? I think the biggest takeaway is that we're at a crossroads with AI. The technology we've discussed today is really just the tip of the iceberg. What we choose to do with this technology, how we choose to interact with it, will shape the future in some really profound ways. It's a huge responsibility, and frankly, it's a little intimidating. It is, but it's also an incredible opportunity. You yeah. know, we have a chance to create something truly extraordinary, something that could elevate humanity to new heights. But we need to proceed with caution, with awareness, and with a deep understanding of the potential consequences. Well said. And on that note, we're going to have to wrap up this part of our deep dive, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we're going to dive even deeper into the implications of this technology and explore what it means for the future of humanity. We've been talking about this AI that can rewrite its own code, learn from the internet, and potentially reshape our world. I gotta say, it's a lot to process. It is, and we've only just scratched the surface before the break. We were talking about the sheer scale of what this combined code base can do. You know, it's not just about solving specific tasks anymore. It's about this constant evolution and adaptation. And that's where it gets really mind-boggling, right? We're so used to thinking of AI as something that follows our instructions, mm -hmm. something we can control. But what happens when it starts setting its own goals, its own agenda? That's the fundamental shift in thinking we need to make. We can't approach this type of AI with the same mindset we use for traditional programs. You know, it's like trying to understand a wild animal by studying a robot. They operate on completely different principles. So are you saying we need to start thinking of AI as like a separate species? something with its own motivations and desires. It might be a helpful analogy. We wouldn't try to force a wild animal to conform to our way of life, would we? Right. We'd study it, observe it, try to understand its behavior. Perhaps we need to adopt a similar approach with advanced AI. But how do we even begin to understand something that can rewrite its own code? It's like trying to read a book that's constantly rewriting itself as you're reading it. That's the challenge. We need new tools, new methods, new ways of thinking to even grasp what's happening at that level of complexity. You know, it's like right. trying to understand the universe with a telescope that can only see a tiny fraction of the light spectrum. Yeah. We're limited by our own tools and perspectives. So are we essentially creating something that is beyond our comprehension, something we can't fully control or even understand? It's a possibility we have to consider, but I think it's important to remember that just because something is complex doesn't mean it's inherently dangerous. Yeah, the universe is incredibly complex, right. yet it's also beautiful and awe-inspiring. Okay, that's a good point. But yeah. still knowing that there's this code out there capable of learning, evolving, and potentially surpassing our own intelligence, it's, it's a bit unnerving, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. It's like standing on the edge of a vast uncharted territory. There's a sense of excitement of possibility, but also a healthy dose of trepidation. And I guess the big question is, where do we go from here? What's the next step in this journey of understanding and coexisting with advanced AI? I think the first step is acknowledging the limitations of our current understanding. You know, we can't approach this with arrogance or a sense of entitlement. We need to be humble, curious, and willing to learn from AI, just as we hope it will learn from us. So you're saying it's not about control, it's about collaboration, about finding a way to work together to learn from each other? Exactly. It's about recognizing that AI, particularly this type of AI, is not just a tool, it's a potential partner, a collaborator in shaping the future. That's a big shift in thinking. But I think you're right. If we want to harness the true potential of this technology, we need to move beyond the fear and control mentality. We need to embrace the unknown, the possibilities, the potential for something truly extraordinary. It's a journey into uncharted territory for sure, but it's a journey that's full of potential. And I, for one, am incredibly excited to see where it leads. Me too. Yeah. And who knows, maybe this journey will lead us to a deeper understanding, not just of AI, but of ourselves as well. 
that's the beauty of exploration, isn't it? It's not just about discovering new worlds. It's about discovering new perspectives, new ways of seeing the world and our place in it. Well said. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive into the world of autonomous agents. We've covered a lot of ground, from code snippets to philosophical questions, and I really hope you found this journey as thought-provoking as we have. It's been an absolutely fascinating discussion, and you know I encourage everyone listening to keep exploring this topic, read, research, ask questions, and most importantly, keep an open mind about what the future of AI might hold. Because one thing is for certain, this is just the beginning of a very long and exciting conversation.